In this video, I'll step you through the calculations required for a basic retirement problem. So let's assume we're in a situation where we're 25 years old, we'd like to retire when we're 65, and we plan on retiring on $20,000 a month for our retirement income, and that we're going to live for 20 years after retirement. You've got to have some inputs for that, so let's go ahead and make those assumptions. Uh, our investment accounts earn 9% a year, and so a reasonable question is, is how much must you save at the end of every month if you're to fund this type of retirement? Now, notice the $20,000 a month might not be realistic. Uh, it might be that you might plan on living much longer than 20 years after retirement, or you'd like to retire earlier. Setting up a model like this allows you to change the parameters. So in this case, the timeline looks something like this. We're going to save for a while, uh, in this case, save for 25 to 65, which is 40 years or 480 months. So we'll have a bunch of savings. We don't know how much that's going to be, but we'll save a certain amount at the end of every month. And then we're going to retire. And at the end of our next, our first month of retirement, we're going to, uh, we're going to start withdrawing $20,000 a month. And that may seem like a lot or may not seem like a lot, I'd, whichever way it is. If you don't like that amount, choose a different amount. Uh, and we'll do that for 240 months. So this is a two-step problem. The first step is to figure out how much you need to accumulate in order to fund this retirement. In other words, how much must you have on the day that you retire, which is at the end of your 480th month, how much must you have on that day in order to fund all of these withdrawals if your investment account is going to continue to earn 9% a year? Because presumably you're going to keep your money in that investment account even once, you've, uh, even once you've retired. So how much must you accumulate? Well, that's a simple present value, uh, present value function or a present value problem, accumulate. And we'll do that, uh, do that pretty easily here equal PV. All right, what's, the, what's going to happen? We've got 9% uh, is our annual rate. Of course, we're making monthly payments, and so we need a monthly rate. So it's going to be 9% divided by 12. Our number of periods, well, we can, we looked here, I calculated 240, but since we're using our input section here for the model, let's go ahead and do the calculation. Uh, it's going to be our, our uh, year that we anticipate that we'll die minus our retirement age, so that's 20 years. And then we also need to multiply that by 12 because we're going to do this in months. So there's the number of months that we anticipate uh, we're going to live and need to withdraw money. And then our periodic payment. Well, our periodic payment is this $20,000. I actually didn't put that in the input section. I probably should have, but I'll just put it right here. There's uh, there's $20,000. I don't want that. That's uh, I am log 10. I don't know what that's for, but we don't want that. We just want uh, $20,000. And then that's our future value. Uh, that's our, our payment. And then our future value is zero because we're not going to leave anything in our account um, when we die. And uh, our type is zero because we're assuming that we're making payments at the end of every period. And so let me go ahead and point these out. The rate, that's 9% divided by 12. The number of periods is how many years? 85 is our death age minus 65. That's our retirement age multiplied by 12. That's how many months? That's the number of periods. Our periodic payment is here and in, in G10 over here. Probably I should have put it uh, in my input section, but there's my periodic payment. And then my uh, future value is zero and because we have no lump sum at the very end. And then finally, this is an ordinary annuity. I've set this up so it's just an ordinary annuity. Uh, and so our payments occur at the end of every period. And when I press enter, I see that we need to accumulate $2.22 million in order to fund this retirement. Okay, so you've got to accumulate $2.22 million in order to fund the retirement. retirement. So next question is, is how much must we save uh, each month in order to fund that retirement? Well, we're, we're basically going to have an annuity and it's going to be 480 uh, periods, 480 months. And we want the future value of that annuity to grow to 
$2.22 million because this is how much we need. We need $2.22 million as of uh, year four, uh, month 480. So how do we do this? We use a future value function. Uh, we're going to use the payment function actually. Equal PMT. We're going to calculate the payment that gives rise to. All right, so what do we have? We have a rate at 9% divided by 12. Same thing. Now, how many months are we going to accumulate? We're going to accumulate from our current age up to our retirement age. So that will be 65 minus 25, or 40, uh, 40 years. Multiply that by 12, and that gives us how many months? That will be 480 in our example. All right, our present value, I'm going to go ahead and put zero in here. That's We have no money saved right now. We will, uh, we will eventually have some, but right now we have none. If we had some money saved, then we would uh, then we would put it in there and we'd put that in there as a negative amount because that's the amount that we'd need to invest. Uh, our future value, our desired future value is this 2.22 million dollars. Well, here's where you have to think about the sign of your inputs. Uh, we want to accumulate $2.22 million and we want our payments to be negative. That means our future value actually needs to be a positive number. And that positive number will have this, it, the, the number $2.22 million is over here in cell B20, but it's a negative number. So I've got to change the sign of it by putting a negative sign in front of it. So I've changed the sign into negative B20. And now the way that I have this set up, and this is an ordinary annuity with uh, cash flows occurring at the end of every period, the way that I have, have this set up now is all right, our interest rate, B16 divided by 12, that's the 9% divided by 12. Our number of periods, that's how many years we have until we retire, in this case 40 times 12, that gives us the months. Present value, that would be how much money you have in your account right now, that corresponds to an additional payment that you would make right now. So if you had an amount in your account right now, this zero right here would be like, you know, suppose you had $100,000. Then it would be negative $100,000 right here uh, for the amount because that would be a payment. This is the one that's a little bit confusing here is this B20, the amount that we need to accumulate. Well, the amount that we need to accumulate showed up as a negative number because I used the uh, I use the uh, present value function, and it was the present value of a bunch of positive numbers here. And, it, and the way Excel works with that is that it answers the question, how much must you have, $2.22 million, in order to fund all of these withdrawals? Well, I needed to change the sign of that to make it a positive number to fit with the way that we're thinking about uh, these cash flows. Now, when I press Enter, I should get a negative number that is the payment required uh, every month, the savings that I need to make every month in order to fund that $2.22 million. And that's uh, $474. And notice that, that if, for example, I retire later, and actually let me give you the formulas first, equal formula. There's the formula for the first one, and here's the formula for the second one. Uh, notice that if I, I don't know, retire later. So suppose instead of retiring at 65, I'm going to retire at 70. So I'm just going to change this input from 65 to 70. Well, that gives me more years to accumulate money and fewer years to spend it. And so that should reduce my retirement contributions. And it does. It reduces them almost in half. Uh, it reduces them to $266. Now let's uh, undo that. Uh, suppose I wait from now, and I'm 25 now. Suppose I wait until I'm 40 to start doing this. So if I wait until I'm 40 to start retiring, that's when I'm 15 years later, uh, I'm going to have fewer, uh, 15 years, fewer years of, of accumulations. Uh, I still have to come up with $2.22 million. And so that means that my retirement contributions are going to be bigger. How big are they going to be? Well, they're 474 if I start when I'm 25, but they're $2,000 a month if I wait until I'm 40 to, to retire. Okay, so that's, uh, that's, that's quite a difference. So let's go back to 25. 
All right, and then finally, if I have a, an amount already, and I didn't, uh, I didn't put in an in input for that, but if I had an amount already in my checking account, on my savings account, then I would include that here in the present value slot for the PMT function, and it would need to be a negative number the way I have it set up because a negative number is a payment and that would correspond to uh, an additional amount that you saved, a payment that you saved at time zero.